Today is Mother's Day. So why don't we do this? Why don't all of our mothers stand all over the room, and why don't we give it up for Mama today, y'all? Come on. Let's celebrate mothers all over this room today. And we celebrate you. We celebrate you. Amen. And at the end of the service today, we have um, a special gift that we want to give you from our church to let you know how much we love you and appreciate you. You know, I started thinking about this day, and I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to make it brief today. I'm not going to hold you long because I know that every husband in this house and every, uh, you know, th th these men have worked so hard over the last 24 hours cooking lunch today. <laughs> that was an immediate, I mean, Im an immediate response of laughter. <laughs> but here's the thing. If you didn't cook lunch, that means you got to buy lunch. And there ain't nobody laughing about that today. Amen. But just make sure that these women are taken care of. I was thinking about today, y'all, and I realized that, that today I didn't just want to talk about mothers. Today I feel like it's a, a day when we celebrate women as a whole. I think today we celebrate in church on this Mother's Day, we celebrate the presence of women in our, in our church and women in our society. And I found out that, that women play a huge role in just about in, in just about every situation amen and but especially not just in the world but especially in the church that women we need women in the church now men I'm giving you a great opportunity to respond to me right now and uh, but I, I, I thought about this and I thought that today we don't need to just celebrate those that are mothers because there are different situations in this room but today we need to celebrate the, the women, and you know what I found out when I started thinking about women? I found out that, and I thought back through the scripture, and I remembered that when Jesus was crucified, the last ones left with him at the cross were women. I remembered that it was also women that were the first ones that showed up at the tomb. Can I get a witness? I also remember that it wasn't long after the Lord's ascension when he gave the instructions to the church of what to do after he left. The Bible records in Acts chapter 1 that there's women that are gathered there along with the men, but it mentions specifically women, uh, the names of women that are gathered there doing just exactly what Jesus said do to pray for the promise of the Father. I'm here to tell you, women have for years, hundreds of years, played a huge role in the church. I'm going to tell you, I've been pastoring since 1994, and I have learned to appreciate the presence of women in the church. I found out that when you can't depend on... I can talk about us because I am one. That the women, you can depend on the women of the church. And I thought about all the powerful roles of women in the church, but maybe the greatest role that we can think of of women within the body of Christ is women are worshipers. Oh, you don't, you don't really believe that? Well, go back to the scripture. And when you go back to the scripture, there's more than one example of how that women were extravagant worshipers. Oh, it was a woman that went back, and you heard me talk a little bit about this on Easter. It was a woman that went in her private stash and pulled out her most expensive perfume, a perfume that cost her what it took to earn the, the, a year's wages. She spent and she broke that bottle open in worship and poured it over the head of Jesus. It was a woman that extravagantly before the Lord, kneeled before God, took her hair, and washed the feet of Jesus in worship. Women are worshipers. Somebody say that. Women are worshipers. And so I, what I want to talk to you for just a few moments for today before we give our gifts and pray over our, our mothers today, I want to talk to you about the fact, I want to talk to you for just a moment about a woman of worship. There are some things about a woman of worship that I think are worth mentioning in this room today. Number one, I need you to understand that a woman of worship is focused on God and not herself. She's focused on God and not herself. Maybe the greatest example of a woman focused on God and who God is in all of Scripture and not thinking of herself would be the example found in 1 Samuel. There's a lady in 1 Samuel by the name of Hannah. 
Hannah is the wife of Elkanah. Elkanah has two wives. He has one like Hannah who is barren and can't bear children, and then he has another one by the name of Penaniah that is what we would refer to in the South as fertile myrtle. She was the one that would kept giving this man child after child after child. And the Bible says that because she was able to bear all these children and Hannah wasn't, that Penaniah would always, she would always taunt Hannah about the fact that she could never satisfy her husband with this child. And so year after year, Hannah is going before the Lord, going into the temple, offering sacrifices, calling out to God, asking God to give that special child, but yet she doesn't get an answer from God until one particular time the Lord finally answers Hannah's prayer, and Hannah has a very unusual response to what God does in her life. And the response is found in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 27. The Bible said, I asked the Lord, this is Hannah speaking, she said, I asked the Lord to give me this boy, and he has granted my request. Now, watch what she does. Now I'm giving him to the Lord, and he will belong to the Lord his whole life. And they worshiped the Lord there. She, God finally gave her this child after all of these years of agonizing before the Lord. And what does she do? The greatest act of worship is to give that that she has believed God for for so long back to the Lord. And so she gives Samuel to God. And Samuel, the scripture said, is raised by the priest in the house of God, Eli. And Samuel becomes one of the greatest voices for, for God and the things of God ever known. And in, in, in what is really, really interesting about this whole story is that when it's all said and done, and after she gives Samuel back to God, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2 records these words, and this is what this woman of worship does. She says this, no one is holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Now, the natural response would be, you know, God, you, I, I needed this, and I cried for this baby, and I, and I longed for this baby, and I sacrificed for this baby, and now I finally got this baby, and you mean I got to give this baby up, and I can't live where this baby lives? And, but, and the natural response would be, why did you even give me this baby, God? But instead of her saying that, she said, there's no one holy like our Lord, and there's no one beside you. There's no rock like our God. She was a woman of worship. She was a woman that did, was not focused on her own personal th needs, but she understood that this was a child given to her by God for the work of God and for the things of God. She was a woman of worship. The second thing I, I want to share with you about women of worship is that they aren't concerned with what others think. I found out, you know, as we've already talked about the New Testament, they were extravagant in their worship. You remember when, when Jesus went to the house of, of Mary and Martha, Mary just got down and started worshiping. She didn't care what, it, it, she, she put all, everything else aside, put all the work aside, and she just worshiped God. You ever known a woman like that, that she didn't care what anybody thought about her when she went to worship? You bet, and some of y'all sitting next to some of them this morning. They get, and they don't care. You know, I've, yeah, it's amazing. I love to see a woman go and get herself all made up. She go to a beauty shop, get her hair done, get her makeup done, get her, and then when she gets in the presence of God, it's like she loses all concern about what she looked like when she came in. The next thing you know, the mascara is running down unless you got that new stuff that doesn't run. Somebody say, thank God. The Lord gave us that, that mascara that doesn't run. <laughs> She gets herself all right, and, and a woman will get into a place where she doesn't mind slinging her hair a little bit when it comes to worshiping God. She doesn't care what anybody thinks. As a matter of fact, the scripture records a woman like this, a woman that wasn't concerned about even what the greatest officials had to say because one of the greatest examples in scripture is in Judges chapter 4. It's another powerful lady, and her name is Deborah. 
When you look at Judges, the book of Judges 4 and 5, you, you, look, you, you see this woman, Deborah. Deborah was a woman that was really before her time. The Bible describes that, that Deborah is a, a lady sort of like your wife is. How many of you feel like your wife is a multitasker? Your wife can, how many feel like, I mean, you know your wife has to wear all kind of hats. <laughs> women can get things done. I'm going to tell you something. Women just, I mean, they just, it, it, my wife amazes me. She just amazes me. And, and I found out about my wife, something, something interesting about my wife is, is that my wife, you know, when, 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 when somebody, when I talk about doing something, that's what I, that's literally what I do. I talk about it. You know, if I'd say, okay, you know what, I think I might, uh, I think I might paint the garage. Well, you know what that's going to consist of? That's going to consist of several weeks of me planning. <laughs> Can I get a witness? And I'm going to plan it out right. That meant several weeks of me coming in in the afternoon, grabbing a glass of sweet tea, getting in my chair and contemplating this thing. But I found out with my wife, you know, and it wasn't too long ago in the house we lived in before we moved in here, I found out my wife comes in one day. She said, you know what? I've been thinking about painting the kitchen. Well, thinking about painting the kitchen for my wife is totally different than me because she's talking about thinking about painting the kitchen in like in the next hour or so. And she ain't thinking about calling somebody to come paint the kitchen like I'm thinking about, hey, you know what? I mean, you know, we got a little bit left over. We got a little to the side here. Why don't we just get some? No, no. She, her thing is we're going to paint the kitchen, and we're going to paint the kitchen. And the next thing I know where I'm set, when I'm sitting in my moment of trying to plan all of this out, she's already got a ladder. She's already got a roller. She's already dipping into the paint. She's already rolling the walls. <laughs> Hello, somebody. And she's over there saying, well, you, you know, you don't, don't worry about it. You ain't, you, you just said this, enjoy. you don't have to, you don't have to do anything. Y'all know what that means? That means get your lazy rear end up out of that chair and get busy. <laughs> and what happens is you don't just start rolling the kitchen out. Next thing you know, we rolled out of the kitchen into the dining room. And before I know it, she has moved on from, from painting. Now she's not painting. She's doing something else and I'm painting. Hello, somebody. <laughs> it's amazing. The Bible said Deborah was a woman before time. She, she's, the, the, the scripture says she's a wife. If you study her, she's not only a wife, she's a prophetess. She's a judge. And she's a warrior all in one. I don't know about y'all, but my wife is a warrior. Y'all want to, hey, don't, don't, just don't, don't take my word for it. Go up and try to mess with Blake, Dalton, or Connor after church. I dare you. Y'all see them big heels she got on? <laughs> She's a warrior. I'm going to tell y'all something. There's some big men in this room, some bad men in this room. I know you're bad. I know you can fight and all that, but I'm going to tell you, when I get in a fight and I don't want you, I want my wife. I'm like, go get them, girl. Go get them. Go get them. <laughs> Deborah was a warrior. She was a prophet. She was a judge. And, and, and she was so confident in who she was and, and her leadership role that the Bible said that the commander would not even go into battle without her. Look at, look at the screen. The Bible says in Judges chapter 4, verse 8, this is what Barak said. Barak told her, I will go, but only if you go with me. I'll go, but only if you go. But here's the thing about this woman. The, the thing, she's a powerful wife. She's a prophet. She's a judge. She's a warrior. She's got all of it. But there's one thing that takes precedence over everything else. One, one thing that is more important to her than anything else. Number one, she's a woman of worship. Because this is what the Bible says. When the battle was over, and their enemies had been defeated. The Bible said, Deborah, she did not hold back from praising God. And it was no matter who was listening. 
no matter who it was and no matter that, that, that she was in the presence of royalty and powerful people when it was said and done. Look at it. If you don't believe me, look at it. Judges chapter 5, verse 3, the Bible said, listen. This is what Deborah said. Listen, you kings. Pay attention, you mighty rulers, for I will sing to the Lord and I will Make music to the Lord, to the God of Israel. I'm here to tell you that we are celebrating women throughout the body of Christ today. Women that will stand up and say, I will worship God. I will praise the Lord. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I don't care if I mess my hairdo up. I don't care if I make my makeup run. I'm going to lift my hands to the Lord because God has been good. God has blessed me. God has blessed my children. God has blessed my marriage all the days of my life. I I will praise him. I'm looking for a couple of hundred women in this room right now that would give God the very best praise that you could give him because you understand you were created to worship God. Hallelujah. Created to worship God. Created to honor the Lord. Deborah went on to recount all that God had done on her behalf and on behalf of his people. But see, Deborah did it, ladies, at a different time. It's easier now. Deborah did it in a culture and in a time which women were not usually respected, nor were they followed. But you know what happened? She was such a worshiper. And she, would, she had been so much with God that Deborah was one who commanded respect because of her confidence in her God. She demanded it. You ever been around a woman like that? They demand it. And it's not something that they, that they, they tell you that you got to do, it's something about them that says she's a woman of God and she's to be honored. A worshiping woman is, number one, she's one that's focused on God and not herself. Number two, she's not concerned what others think. And number three, she's one that leads other women to worship. You know, some of the most powerful groups in churches across America are women's prayer groups. That's who everybody, when, when we get in trouble, that's who we call. Call sister so-and-so. Call ain't so-and-so. Call granny so-and-so. Come on now. You know what I'm talking about. Because we know that women, women know how to pray. Women know how to touch heaven. As a matter of fact, it was... It was the presence of women with the children of Israel. In Exodus, when God led his people out of Egypt and through the Red Sea uh, onto dry ground, the Bible says this, that Moses and the Israelites, they came out praising God on the other side. Who was leading the way? Who was leading the pack? Who was the one that was the who were the ones that were the examples of the praise? The Bible said one, it named one in particular, one by the name of Miriam. The Bible said Miriam picked up a tambourine and led all the other women in praise. Look at it in your Bible. Exodus chapter 15, verse 20. This is what the Bible said. The Bible said, then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, she took a tambourine and she led all the women as they played their tambourines and as they danced. I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all something. You can say what you want to, but there's nothing like spirit-filled women of God with a tambourine in their hand or their hands lifted or their hands clapping or a dance in their step. Oh, hallelujah, that, that can lead you into the presence of the Lord. The Bible said, and Miriam sang this song. 
She sang this song, sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He has hurled, what's this, both horse and rider into the sea. Let me tell you what's happening right now in America. Let me tell you what's going on all around you, but CNN won't tell you about it. Even Fox News won't tell you about it. It ain't going to come from the local news or the national news. They won't tell you about it. But in the midst of all of the upheaval and in the midst of of all the, the negative that we see. There is a group of spirit-filled people and especially women that are raising their voice before the Lord and they're praising God. And you know what they're doing? They're doing what the scripture has taught us to say. Lord, you have been faithful in the past. Lord, you have brought us out of every other situation. Lord, you've been faithful to this nation. Lord, you brought us to where we are. Let me tell you, you know how you get through the struggle you're in right now? It's remembering the struggle that God has already brought you out of. I wonder if I could find 50 women in this room right now that's got a praise that says God has been good. God is good and God will always be good. Somebody take a moment and give God the best praise you've given him all day long. Oh, come on and praise him like you know how to praise him. Some of you older ladies, show some of these younger ladies how to praise God. Some of you younger ladies show some of these older ladies how to praise God. They came. They came out on the other side of the wilderness saying, thank God. How many of you know that God has parted some red seas for us? How many of you know that God has been faithful to us? How many of you know that God that was faithful then is faithful now and he's faithful now? He'll be faithful tomorrow. And you know what you got to do? Sometimes, you know, the children of Israel, they came out and they were headed to the land of promise and the Bible records several different Hebrew words for the worship that they gave God. They gave God a Barak pray, a, a Barak worship, was to, which meant to bow and to worship the Lord. They gave God a halah, a, a praise, which was where we get the, the word hallelujah that's known around the world. And it just, you know what, when you look that word up, it means to rant and rave and play the part of a fool. It's the same kind of praise that David gave when in 2 Samuel chapter 6 when he saw the ark of God coming back from the house of Obed-Edom. And he saw the ark of God coming. And when he saw it coming, the Bible said he stripped off his royal robe down to his tunic and he started to dance before the Lord with all of his might. We see that kind of, we see a yada kind of thing. The word yada means to give God praise with extended hands. See, you, you let people question your praise when you shouldn't let them question your praise because the Bible said praise the Lord with extended hands. It says praise the Lord with the clapping of the hands. There are all kinds. Amen. All kinds of different words used as they were coming out. But there's one Hebrew word and it's the word todah. And it means to give God praise before something happens. You know what todah is? Todah is a faith praise. Toda is a, is a praise that says, hey, God, I don't have to see anything to believe it. I don't have to have any tangible thing to, before I know that you're God. Toda is a faith praise. Toda is to trust God and to know that God's credit is good. Y'all don't hear me. Look at somebody next to you and say, God's credit's good. You know when God starts to move? You know when God will show up and shake the place? The same way he did in Acts chapter 16 when Paul and Silas were tied up in stocks and in chains. But in stocks and in chains and at the midnight hour, the Bible said Paul and Silas began to sing praises unto God even when they were chained up. And when they started to praise God with their chains on, the Bible said the chains fell off. The prison door slang open and they walked out of their free men. How many of you in this room today for the last few minutes of this service realize that God's credit is good in this room and you're willing to give God praise for what you are believing God to do. God hasn't done it yet but you believe he's about to. How many of you know a miracle's coming next week or next month or next year? Come on and give God a faith praise in this room today if you know what I'm talking about. Woo! Ah! God is up to something. 
want to give him. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Pastor Bo, it's Mother's Day and we have guests in the house. Behave yourself. So you want me to act different than you told them I act. <laughs> you want the church to be different because we have guests in the house. They're here because they heard about your church. Hallelujah. And let me tell y'all something. I'm, I'm, I'm beyond the point of that, that we can get emotional about everything in the world but the things of God. We can get emotional about ball games. We can get emotional at, at, when we watch our little kid. You know, let, let, let me tell you something. Any, any, watch a mother that tells you that she's quiet and she's shy and she never makes any noise. Take her to her little league ball game and let her little boy knock a home run and you'll see the shyness lift. But yet we have, but yet we can't express ourselves to God. Today, I celebrate in this room worshiping women, women that know how to honor the Lord. I thank God I was raised by a worshiping woman. My wife, my mama would have scared y'all in church. She went and man, she'd come in church. She'd have that hair all done, and she'd have, you know, and she'd have her best dress on and that kind of thing. But the next thing you know, she would be up there on the front of church and be done slung her shoes off. And when my mama slung her shoes off, get out of the way, y'all. Amen. She came to praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm thankful that I was raised by a worshiping woman because her worship took her into the presence of God. And she, when she was in the presence of God, she could talk to God about things that she needed to talk to him about concerning my life and my brother's life. And I'm here today preaching the gospel, and my brother's uh, two hours and 15 minutes away from me preaching the gospel just like I am today, both of us serving the Lord. And all of our children are serving God in church this morning. You hear me? My three boys were on this platform today. Are you hearing me? And my brother's two boys are somewhere in Alabama serving the Lord this morning because we had a worshiping woman in our life that knew how to get close to God. I'm going to ask you this morning, if you would, all over the room to stand with me because we're going to honor these precious women of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs>